Welcome to session 3 of uh, HyperMesh uh, Reduce uh, Interface Demos. So in this section, I'll uh, demonstrate on uh, creating the different loads and uh, boundary conditions. Uh, so the different loads and boundary condition, what uh, I'll be creating in this session are, uh, I'll be creating uh, a initial velocity, uh, so which will make uh, a impact case and uh, I'll apply the gravity load and uh, uh, just to have the variety uh, in the demonstration so normally like um, yeah, when we have uh, a initial velocity normally in all the impact cases uh, the primary load what we'll be having is uh, the initial velocity whether it has uh, a front impact of uh, the vehicle uh, a drop test so in all the cases the loads what we'll be having is only the uh, initial velocity and uh, the secondary load may be the gravity and uh, if it's a quasi-static we may be having the loads like uh, imposed displacement, imposed velocity or the force so those type of loads. Uh, here since uh, I want to show multiple loads uh, so I'll be applying uh, the initial velocity uh, and gravity also so that uh, we will solve it as a separate uh, impact case and separately I will apply uh, the imposed uh, uh, displacement also to make it one more quasi-static case. So basically from here on uh, I'll be uh, building the model in two directions. Uh, so one direction is uh, building the model for uh, uh, impact analysis and the other direction is uh, building the model for a quasi-static analysis. Okay. So let's uh, start with this. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So I have uh, the final model from uh, uh, session two, where uh, we have created all the uh, connections in the session two. So let's work on uh, uh, building loads and boundary condition. Okay. So now to make it first as the impact case, uh, what all we require is uh, I should have uh, a initial velocity, I should have the gravity, and of course uh, it should go and hit against a barrier. Okay. So since it has to travel, okay, I need a road and I need a barrier. So those are all the things which are required for uh, a impact case. Okay, so let's uh, uh, create that one by one. Okay, so I'm going to tools and a BC manager. So this is the section from where we can create all uh, different types of uh, loads and body condition. Okay, so this is uh, quite a neat section where you can create all the required entities using the one page. So to start with, I'll be applying the initial velocity. Initial velocity, the type is uh, initial velocity. Okay, and uh, this I'll be, up, I'll be applying in positive x direction. So I'll be, I'll be taking uh, a speed of uh, maybe a 45 kmph which will amount to uh, 12,500 millimeter per uh, second. Okay, fine. Now, you have to be careful while applying this one. Okay, so what you have to make sure is, you have to make sure that you will apply this initial velocity on all the nodes of the model, especially the master nodes of the rigid body. Okay, that's why I'll make sure that I'll come here and I will switch on all the entities. Okay, because uh, if I have, if I would have applied some mass on the rigid bodies, if you remember in the session one, I have uh, applied, I have created a rigid on the engine and I have applied 200 kgs mass on that one. So if I 
don't apply the velocity on uh, those nodes then the kinetic energy will not be calculated on uh, those nodes uh, so it is very important that uh, I switch on all those entities and uh, select all those nodes okay so I have done that now here I will go with the selection of uh, nodes this is also important uh, though you see the many different uh, selection options uh, here okay so if you go with the parts and other things um, um, the entities like those only only elements are the rigids uh, you will miss that one okay of course you can select uh, but if you have those entities in your model then it is always better to go with an option of nodes by which you're taking care that you're selecting all the nodes so I'll go with the nodes here and uh, I will just select all the nodes okay you're seeing some temp nodes here which I will tell you like why it is there but as of now I don't need them in the initial velocity okay so I have selected all the nodes of the vehicle good I will say proceed and create okay I have created uh, an initial velocity for the impact load it's taking some time to create so this I will follow with uh, the gravity load okay I have inch velocity now it is gravity I will choose uh, the gravity load this again I want to apply on uh, all the nodes okay so here also I have to select all the nodes so gravity it has to be applied uh, uh, through a function so I will create the function a new function which is uh, gravity so as per my unit system I will just create a constant gravity curve and here x is time and y is the gravity so it is just constant okay just to say it is constant so gravity and it is of course in z and I have to make sure uh, yeah so here in the direction you don't have anything like uh, positive like negative x or negative y negative z but here the gravity has to be applied in negative z direction so what we do is just now I created uh, uh, a function uh, in the function as you see like uh, y is the load and x is the time okay so either you can create uh, the function itself in uh, uh, fourth abscissa the uh, fourth coordinate so either you can create the function in fourth coordinate by putting um, like minus 9810 or if you don't want to do that one you can put scale y as minus 1 by which you are reversing the load so in a in a simple terms uh, whenever you want to apply the loads in the negative x negative y negative z or any of the negative uh, directions you have to make the scale y as minus 1 Okay, and I'll create this one so I'm creating the gravity load so next to this uh, I have to create uh, uh, the ground and the wall Okay. Yes. So I will just uh, switch off these collectors so that uh, they don't disturb me. ok 
okay fine so now to create uh, the wall uh, so again there are, uh, are different types of wall uh, available so i am going to create a rigid wall here so here let me name it as road okay so i will just uh, select one of the bottom most uh, point or maybe like i will move the bottom most point by say as minimum as uh, say 1 mm so that will be my reference at the base node So here I have to uh, like uh, there are as I was telling there are varieties of uh, our uh, rigid walls. So this for road I'll be using an infinite plane. So though in the representation it just looks like one plane, uh, as the name suggests, it is an infinite plane. Uh, so I'm just in that in that plane I'm creating an infinite plane. So the reference node is uh, this. So that will be the base node. Proceed. And I have to say the normal for this R wall. See normally you have to choose in a way which should be opposing the direction of the falling object. So here the object which will be falling or moving that will be trying to move in a negative uh, Z direction. So my normal has to be in positive Z direction. Okay, so it is uh, 1. Okay. So after creating just make sure that you can see here the normal is in positive Z direction. So this is fine. Okay. Now it, it is also possible to define uh, the friction for this uh, R wall. So I will say the motion, I will say the sliding type is a 2 which says it is sliding with friction. Okay. So now I have selected 2 and I will specify a friction as maybe 0.15. Now I have to specify which are all the nodes which should not cross this all R1. Okay, this is some this is a, this is also a kinematic condition where we are saying we are we are defining one plane so that is our uh, like a master plane and we are selecting a slave set of slave nodes and we say like these slave nodes should not cross this R wall. Okay, so that is what I am doing now. So I will say nodes maybe nodes by collector so here it is just sufficient to choose the tires okay so obviously when a tire doesn't move a tire doesn't cross this R wall of course the entire vehicle also it is not uh, crossing it okay with that assumption okay I will say add okay so return yeah, so now your R wall is ready as a road. So just I can review this. So when you review this, make sure that uh, you should see your uh, the plane as uh, blue and uh, the nodes as the red nodes. Okay, that is what you should see. Fine. Now let's create uh, one more type of uh, R wall which is uh, not an infinite which is a plane okay so that will represent uh, the vertical rigid barrier so let me create one more uh, rigid wall which is a wall okay so here i am not going with uh, infinite plane so instead i will be going with uh, a parallel which is a finite parallel so to create that I need some uh, reference nodes so for that reason uh, I created these nodes okay 
So here I will select uh, uh, the base node as this and uh, okay and one of the corner corner node as this and the other corner node as this. Okay. So when we choose uh, these things, okay. So here also you have to ensure the uh, normal what you see. It is in the direction opposing the motion of the vehicle. Okay. So we have that one here. And for selection of the slave node, one of the methods uh, what you saw. Uh, was we physically selected uh, the nodes. Uh, so we physically selected uh, the slave nodes. The other option may be also you can specify the distance. Okay, so let me specify maybe a distance of say 500. Okay, so if I do that, so from this plane up to 500 mm, which are all the nodes, they'll be considered as slave nodes. So then you don't have to specify anything in this set. It is just a different method. Either you can specify, either you can physically select the nodes, or you can specify the distance. Okay. Now, okay. Now I'll go with the slide method two with a friction of again 0.15 like the last one. Okay. So I just created uh, some variety: one infinite plane with physical selection of nodes and a finite plane with a distance. Let me review this. Yeah, see, it has automatically taken the nodes. Okay, fine. So now uh, this case is uh, ready for, uh, uh, in the sense, from the loading point of view, this case is uh, uh, it will be going for the impact analysis. Okay, so let's uh, save this one. I'll be saving it as HM file only. So till the model is not complete, we still have uh, the other pending work. But as I told, from here on, I'll be taking it in two directions. Like one model will be built for uh, uh, impact, and the other one is for the quality static. Okay. So now uh, this is fine. Um, so this model is ready for uh, the impact. So I'll just uh, delete this, and I'll bring back the model of uh, our regular session two. Okay. Yeah, I don't need this uh, imp nodes anymore. I'm just seeing some of the uh, connectors. Yeah, I just mask it. Okay. So fine. So these are again uh, the base. Uh, a session 2 model. So on this now uh, I want to build one more case where I want to make it a quasi static case by applying the uh, imposed uh, uh, displacement. So now here to apply that uh, imposed displacement I want to bring one impactor. So let me import a more uh, model. to merge this one. Okay, I'll go with the input. Okay. Fine. So now the uh, I have just created one uh, one shell surface. Okay, so the idea is to apply the load using this uh, impactor. Okay, 
so this is as of now uh, the model which I just uh, bought in so it is just uh, a shell component so it doesn't have any property or material now my first thing uh, first objective is to uh, this I want to use it as a rigid impactor and I want to apply the load using this impactor so my first step is to make this as rigid okay so for that purpose uh, as I told in session one, though we are making the component as rigid, we just require uh, uh, a property and a material. So, uh, uh, let me create uh, a separate property and material. I can use uh, some of the existing also, but I just want to keep it separate. So, this is what I will use for rigid impact there shell just basic uh, just as a standard practice I am doing this one thickness maybe one okay that's good and I'll also create a material just elastic is good enough uh, I'll use the steel one it is for impactor. Fine. So now I will update this with the property and uh, material what I created. Okay, good enough. So that is done. And now I will also create one more uh, component to define uh, it as rigid, uh, a rigid collector. It is already there. Okay. So now I'll create uh, my regular practice of uh, multiple node calculated nodes, nodes by collector. I will select this and create. Now I made this uh, impactor as rigid. Okay. Through this I'll be applying the load. Now uh, before applying the load we have to do uh, so uh, this load how I'll be applying is uh, I want to apply impose displacement of uh, say some uh, 200 millimeter and I want to apply it in an oblique direction so that I can also show you that how we can create a local uh, coordinate system so we'll be doing all those things okay so now I'll come to PC manager Okay, so this is a new model. So you are not seeing the earlier one what I uh, created. So first, uh, let me apply. Uh, it is imposed this. Uh, yeah, I'll be applying displacement, imposed displacement. So I'll go with imposed displacement, and this we have to apply it only on the master node of the rigid. So, I'll be applying only on the master node of the rigid there. Okay, good enough. Proceed. And this we have to apply it with respect to a function. So, I will create a function. Okay, so it is just a linear function, 0, 0. So quasi static, my good start is to ramp the load in a span of say at least 200 to 300 millisecond. Okay, so you should not ramp the load uh, very quickly. Uh, with that, you'll be having some dynamic effect. So my good start is like whatever displacement what I want to apply, I want to apply it in a span of uh, 300 millisecond. Okay, so here uh, I want to displace it by say 200 mm. So x is time and y is uh, again the displacement in this case. Okay, just a linear function. Close. Okay, so okay, close. And here we require we need to create a uh, 
skew because it is in uh, one of the oblique direction. It has not uh, decided on the direction, but let me create a skew. So here, uh, if you go by, there are uh, uh, different skews what you can create. So I'll be going with a fixed skew option. There is also a possibility of creating a moving skew. Okay, so which is something like a follower force. So if I relay, if I create this skew on maybe like this member, if this deforms and moves in a particular direction, even your coordinate system also will rotate. So thereby ensuring that load is always perpendicular to the member, something like that. But here I'll be just going with uh, a fixed skew. Okay, so let me create. Uh, okay, so let me create. Uh, let me choose uh, this as my origin. Okay, so my origin will be this and x will be this and xy plane is that. Okay, so I will say create. So if I see with respect to this, I have to apply the load in a negative z direction okay, with respect to this cube, what I have what I have created now. Come back. So I will say now it is z and to make it negative I will say minus. Okay, so all the things are done now. So I have, I have selected the node on which it has to be applied. I have uh, created uh, the function how it has to be applied. And I have uh, also created uh, a skew in which direction it has to be applied. So all the things are there. I will say create. Okay. So it is always a good practice after creating it. If you click on this, uh, so here. Okay. So when you review this, it will show you whether it has been applied or not. So it is applied. Okay, fine. Okay, so I have to apply one more load which is better to have. See here, uh, I want the impactor to always uh, move in, the, in that direction only. So let me apply a boundary condition also. So I'll apply a, a BC for impact so let me call this as okay it's a boundary condition so that I'll be applying on the same node okay and this will be applied with respect to a coordinate system uh, I don't need to create it because it is already there so I will just select that one select the system one okay and I will log all the other direction except the Z which is uh, the load application direction create yeah so that one so in this case uh, I don't want to go with uh, uh, the regular like I don't want to go with uh, 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 the road what we did in the last time uh, so normally like what we do is uh, uh, in these type of load cases structure we lock it to one of the uh, structure we just lock it to the test bench uh, something like that so I want to replicate that scenario so what I do is uh, I create one more uh, boundary condition So just let me keep the vehicle in a particular plane. So you can make the selection uh, more neatly also uh, by creating uh, one rigid body by taking all the four legs. So here I'll be selecting a set of nodes. Maybe from here. And here. So we have the same axis in the rail also, so it has selected uh, the nodes over there. 
Okay, so these are the nodes which are selected. See, and I will constrain in all the direction. Okay, and say create. Yeah, so we have this body condition. Okay, so now for the quality static, I have uh, the model ready where I have created a imposed uh, displacement and uh, I have created uh, in the bottom, I have locked it in all the direction as I have clamped this axis uh, to the test bench. So my quality static case is also ready. So in this section, uh, I uh, showed how to apply different types of uh, loads and boundary condition. Uh, so in the next session, uh, we will create uh, the contacts, which are uh, very important. So that will be the topic for the next session. Thank you.